Good evening, I'm Prasad and this is Kini News. It's only day three of the 15th general election campaign period and the desperation of some to remain relevant is already beginning to show. But we can only expect the allegations and tactics to get more intense in the coming days. So what do we have today? Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has accused Anwar Ibrahim of having a secret pact with Zayed Hamidi. Former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has repeated accusations that Pakistan Harapan chairperson Anwar Ibrahim is working with certain rivals to ensure he ascends the premiership after GE15. Mahathir alleged that Anwar will help drop AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi's court cases and free ex-premier Najib Abdul Razak from jail in return for the top post. He told the Kodakina Balu crowd of talks between Anwar and Zahid that have already transpired. He also reminded voters why they should reject Harapan when they go to the polls on November 19th. Mahathir's remarks echoed those of PN chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin. Muhyiddin warned BN members of a possible cooperation between Zahid and Anwar should BN lack the votes to form a government on its own. Dr. Martha's claim could potentially be damaging to Harapan's reputation and this is why it didn't take long for Anwar Ibrahim to issue a strong denial. PKR chief Anwar Ibrahim has slammed Dr. Mahathir Mohamad for claiming he is forming ties with UMNO. Anwar said this was a false narrative peddled by certain people in BN and Parikata National. Anwar demanded that they show proof of such negotiations having taken place. Dr. Mahathir memang tak sokong PA, eh, saya faham. Dia demam kalau Anwar 20 bulan naik jadi Perdana Menteri yang pertama demam Mahathir. Walaupun saya doa bagi dia sihat. He was responding to Pejuang President Dr. Mahathir Mohamad who said he wouldn't support Pakatan Harapan claiming Anwar was forming ties with UMNO. Anwar then reiterated that he would never support corrupt people, even if it means he loses the chance to become Prime Minister. In fact, even Zayed Hamidi has denied the claim of a secret pact with Anwar, calling Mahathir the father of diversions. BN Chairperson Ahmad Zahir Hamidi has brushed off Dr. Mahathir Mohamad's allegations that he and Pakatan Harapan chief Anwar Ibrahim have a secret pact. Dubbing Mahathir the father of diversions, Zahid said this was just a distraction from the impending wipeout of Mahathir's coalition, Gerakan Tana Air, at the polls. In a press conference in Bagan Datuk Perak today, he said Mahathir feels as if he is always right, that all his speculations are true. He does this because he fears his party will suffer a major defeat. Zahid added that Mahathir can no longer rely on his brand for his new coalition and that the rejection is happening not just in Langkawi but nationwide. He said GTA feels that diversion of issues is a top priority and Mahathir is known as the father of diversion. Previously, Mahathir, who is defending his Langkawi seat, had claimed that Zahid plans to back Anwar as Prime Minister. In exchange, the former Prime Minister alleged that Anwar will free Zahid of his corruption cases in court. This has become a major campaigning point for both Mahathir's GTA coalition and also Parikata National. Anwar has denied the existence of such a pact with Zahid and demanded that Mahathir furnish proof. Many of us grew up watching Transformers, if not the films, the animated show. But who would have guessed that one day Optimus Prime would be the codename? Given to Najib. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak was given the codename Optimus Prime by fugitive Joe Low. Najib's former Ambang relationship manager Joanna Yu testified this at the Kuala Lumpur High Court today. She added that this was what the acronym OP stood for in a transcript of an alleged conversation between her and Low. During this morning's 2.28 billion ringgit 1 MDB corruption trial against Najib, she claimed the conversation took place via BlackBerry Messenger on December 8, 2014. Yu's testimony is similar to the one she gave during the 42 million ringgit SRC international corruption trial against Najib back in 2019. Thien Chua is confident that his decision to contest as an independent in Batu will not affect his friendship with Anwar Ibrahim. However, he has apologised for disappointing the PKR chief. 
Former PKR Vice President Tian Chua has apologized to Anwar Ibrahim for contesting as an independent candidate in Batu. This came after Anwar said Chua will be automatically axed for contesting as an independent against PKR's P. Prabhakaran. Speaking to the Vibes, Chua said he fully understands Anwar's feelings. Chua also said he has no intention of provoking the PKR president and disappointing him. He said no matter what happens, it will not affect their friendship and his support for Anwar's values and struggle. On November 5th, Anwar said those who contest as independents or leave the party for whatever reason will be automatically sacked. Anwar also said Chua's action is not what a reformist should do. Rafizi Ramli was one of the first PKR candidates to declare their assets. However, party boss Anwar Ibrahim's assets are still waiting to be updated. Most of PKR's 72 parliamentary candidates for GE15 have published their asset declarations. However, the asset declarations of party president Anwar Ibrahim and his wife Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail are missing. They are currently marked to be updated. Anwar is contesting Tambun in Perak, while Wan Aziza is contesting Banda Tun Razak in Kuala Lumpur. Party Secretary General Saifuddin Nasution Ismail's asset declaration is also marked to be updated. All PKR candidates are required to declare their assets to the party, but the decision to publish them is unprecedented. However, PKR is not a pioneer with PSM candidates having publicly declared their assets since the 1999 general election. Last week, BN Sungai Bulo candidate Kari Jamaluddin dismissed Rafizi's move to declare his assets and said this is only necessary for cabinet appointments. While the declarations must be notarized by a commissioner of oaths, there does not seem to be auditing on whether the candidates have provided all the details required. PKR Sungai Sipo candidate S. Kizavan, for example, only declared that he has net assets of 981,500 ringgit but did not provide any detail of what they are or the sources. Sungai Bulo candidate R. Ramanan avoided providing details of his assets, liabilities and expenses, providing a lump sum figure instead, 63.5 million ringgit in net assets. The 41-year-old declared total sums for each category of assets including 4 million ringgit in jewellery, 27 million ringgit in residences, 8.5 million ringgit in cars and motorcycles, and 3.5 million ringgit in shares and insurance investment schemes. This is unlike Rafizi who notes the type of properties and sources of his income. The busy campaign schedule has not stopped Rafizi Rumley from doing what he does best, keeping the government in check. The latest, tenders for cronies. The caretaker government has been accused of trying to bulldoze awarding contracts worth billions of ringgit for cronies. PKR Deputy President Rafizi Rumley said this is despite a treasury circular. The Treasury said the caretaker government must avoid entering into contractual commitments or undertakings that would have financial implications on the next government. The Pandan candidate said one case involves the Environment and Water Ministry and flood mitigation projects. He claimed one project in Malacca worth 578.6 million ringgit was already awarded via direct tender to an alleged Amno Kroni company. The award was reportedly announced by caretaker Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub on October 14, four days after Parliament was dissolved. Meanwhile, Rafizi claimed that the Environment and Water Ministry was also in the process of awarding a 2 billion ringgit contract via direct tender to the same company for flood mitigation works in Sungai Langat 2. He has urged Minister Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man to address these allegations. Malaysia Kini has contacted the company involved in the flood mitigation projects for a response to Rafizi's allegations. Before we go, we have a sponsored segment brought to you by the National Recovery Council. Micro, small and medium enterprises, MSME and SMEs, are the backbones of the country's economy, which suffered severe setbacks with the pandemic. 
National Recovery Council, NRC, has organized a series of engagement sessions nationwide through the systematic implementation of the National Recovery Plan, NRP, and vaccination program, which has enabled businesses to reopen safely. And according to Tanshimudin Yasin, MSME contributed close to 40% of Malaysia's gross domestic product GDP and 6.08 billion ringgit were dispersed directly to MSMEs under Grand Has Prihatin when he was the Prime Minister. Saya telah mengusulkan cadangan dan kabinet dan kerajaan Perdana Menteri telah bersetuju supaya di peringkat negeri sewajarnya telah pun ditubuhkan majlis pemulihan negeri sebaik mungkin dipimpin oleh Perdana Menteri ataupun ESPO yang bertanggungjawab tentang soal ekonomi di peringkat ini kerana banyak urusan-urusan kita tahu lah bentadirah dan yang berkaitan dengan perniagaan Ada kaitan dengan bidang kuasa kerajaan negeri ataupun pihak berkuasa tempatan negeri. The council is refining the NRIP 2.0 to ensure with the economy recovering the focus on the people and the sectors mostly affected by the pandemic, high inflation and weak ringgit, namely the B40 households and MSMEs, would remain the priority. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.